Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 22nd AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about form validation, part one. <laughs> okay then dogs, so for the next couple of lessons or so I'm going to talk about form validation and to do that I wanted to create a form page, some kind of contact page. So I've gone ahead and created a new view in the views folder called contact.html. And within this, I've just got a div here with a class of content just to style this a bit better using these styles here. And then within that, I've got a dead simple form, okay? And it's got a name of contact form using camel case. We're going to use that probably in the next tutorial. And then we've got a couple of input fields right here. The first one of type text, the second of type email. Both got placeholders and they've both got a name property as well, name and email. Then we've got a text area for the message itself, again with a placeholder and a name of message. And then finally, just this input type of submit with a value of send. So that's a dead simple form, nothing special there, and that's all I've done. So now what I want to do is serve up this view when someone visits forward slash contact. So we need to set that route up right here in our config. So let's go and grab this route, come down here and paste it in again. And I want to say when it's forward slash contact, I want the view to be in the views folder, then contact.html. And for the time being, we don't need a controller, so let's get rid of that. And we don't need this little comma here because there's only one property now in that object. So let's save that. And now when we go to forward slash contact, this should throw up the form right here. And the reason it looks so nice is because I'm using these styles right here, which you can download from the GitHub page. The link is down below. Okay then, so how does form validation work in AngularJS? Well, Again, at its most basic level, it provides us with a lot of classes that we can use uh, to interact with the user to tell it whether a form field is valid or whether the form itself is valid or invalid or if they've not typed in an, an email correctly or something like that. Okay, For example, if someone types in an invalid email, we could color the border red to say, look, it's not valid. And we could also maybe supply some text below to say you need to enter a valid email. So before we dive in and start writing any code, I just want to go through the classes which we're going to take a look at in this tutorial. Okay then, so here's the classes I want to take a look at in this tutorial. And there's three sets of two essentially. Okay, so the first two right here um, are ng pristine and ng dirty. Now, ng pristine is a class which is applied to our form or any input field which has not yet been used. And by that, I mean no text has been entered into it. It's pristine, very clean, okay? When we type some kind of text into that field or the form itself, then they get classes of ng dirty instead. So they take away pristine, it's no longer pristine, and they give it ng dirty, okay? So now we know that a user has entered something somewhere on the form or in an input field, okay? Okay, so the next pair I want to look at is ng untouched and ng touched. And these are similar, but we don't actually have to type anything in for these to change. So when a form first loads, it's been untouched and the input fields within it have been untouched. But as soon as we click within an input field and then click away from it, uh, AngularJS considers that field to be touched. So it takes away the untouched value and it puts on the ng touched class instead. Okay, we don't need to actually type into it for it to become touched. So the final pair I want to look at is ng valid and ng invalid. So these again are applied to both the form element and input fields. So when um, an input field is valid, i.e. when we type in a correct email address, then Angular will take away the invalid class, which it applies by default when a, uh, a form first loads, and it gives it the valid class. So now we know when a certain field is valid. And if all fields are valid within our form, then it goes ahead and takes away the invalid class from our form element and gives it the valid class. So we know that the whole form is valid as well. Okay then, so before we start playing around with those classes, um, basically what we need to do is hand over control from HTML5 to Angular when it comes to server-side validation because HTML5 has this inbuilt functionality to validate form fields for you. So in order to do that, all we need to do is pass through this attribute right there to the form called no validate. And that's basically saying, look, I don't want HTML5 to validate this for me because Angular is going to do it all for us. All right. So we'll do that. And then in HTML5, if we wanted to make a certain field required, we would do something like this, right? We'd say required. Now in 
Uh, AngularJS is very similar, except we just put ng hyphen required equals true. Okay, so that's all we're going to do. We're going to make each field required now. So Angular knows that we have to put something in each one of these. I'm also going to attach a model to each one of these so that we can store the data because presumably when we do a real world application, we're going to do something with this data, like send it to a database or some kind of email address, right? So let's put a model to each one of these. So ng hyphen model, and I'm going to set the model equal to an object, um, which is the same for each one of these. So the object is going to be called contact because I want them all to be linked. And then I'm going to give each one of these a different property on that contact object. For example, the model for this one is going to be contact dot name. Okay. And then the model for this one, ng model equals contact dot email. And finally for this one, ng model equals contact dot message, just like that. Okay. So now we're storing each one of these on a different property on this object. And just to make sure it's worked, let's output, oops, that object right here. So I'll just use an expression to say contact and output that to the screen. Now, when we type something in, Ryu, Ryu at gmail.com, we're gonna get that stuff right at the top there. It outputs that. So we know now we're storing this stuff in an object and we've got access to that. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of that. And now what we'll do is take a look at these classes. So if I right click and inspect, we're gonna see these classes in the elements tab. Uh, let me just zoom in one more so you can see this. And um, if we expand this, we can see the form first of all, it has that class of ng pristine, which means we've not entered anything into this form yet whatsoever. As soon as we do, this is gonna become ng dirty. So we know that form has been entered into. Uh, it's got ng invalid because currently all these are required and we've not yet entered anything into them. So they're all invalid at the minute. So therefore the form is invalid. Um, and if we expand this, we can see the first input again has got ng pristine. We've not yet typed into it. It's, all got, it's also got ng untouched. That's because we've not clicked into it and then clicked away. Um, it's got ng invalid as well. And it's got required. You can see ng invalid required. So it knows it's required. Same for this input field and pretty much the same for this text area. Okay, so now if you check out these classes right here as I go into it and then come away, this changes from ng untouched to ng touched right there. So we've touched that form field and Angular knows that and therefore we know that. We know that a user has gone into this field and then come away from it. Okay. Um, if I then type something in it, just watch this class right here, ng pristine. If I type Ryu, then that is going to go from ng pristine to ng dirty right there. So now this is a dirty form field. Something's been typed into it. Likewise, the contact form itself gets the class of ng dirty and ng pristine is taken away from it because something has been written into this contact form. Okay, so if you take a look at this one as well, now it's ng valid. So it was ng invalid before, but now we've written a name in it. Angular saying, yeah, I'm happy with that name. It's valid. You can move on. So let's go into the email. So if I type in Ryu there, we get that ng dirty, ng, where is it? ng dirty class right there. We get ng invalid still, okay? And that's because it's saying, well, look, this is an input type of email. So this is not a valid email. Angular is doing that work for us. You know, there's no at sign in there or anything. So it's going to be invalid still. And we could, you know, kind of style this class a bit differently, like red border or something, so that a user knows that, look, this is not yet valid. You need to make this valid until we write in at whatever.com. And now you can see that this will be ng valid. So now it is valid. Okay. Same for the message. As soon as we type something, it's going to become ng dirty. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and it's going to be valid. And now we can let the user send the form. All right. So let's style up these classes to make them look a bit better and give the user some feedback. So what I do, uh, what I want to do is style these input fields and the text area so that if a certain field is not valid, it's going to have a red border. So let's go to the styles.css, come down here and say input 
dot ng invalid and text area dot ng invalid and we're going to give these a border of two pixels solid and red so let's save that now and if we refresh over here nothing yet happens input invalid text area ng invalid and the reason guys is because I'm an absolute dunce and I've misspelled border so if we save that now now you can see they're all red okay but this is still a little bit pants if we first come on to this page they're all going to be red by default because they're all invalid to begin with that's not great you know I don't want these red things shouting out at me when I first go to a form um, but what I do want is if a user clicks into a form, types something that's invalid or just moves on, then it becomes red, okay? So for that to happen, a form field has to be touched so we can combine those classes. So if an input field has the class of ng invalid and also has the class of ng hyphen touched, then we're going to say we want it to be red. Same for this one, ng touched, like that. So this time if I save and then refresh, then when I click in this, it's fine to begin with. If I click away, then it becomes red, okay? Then this one becomes red if I click away. But if I type in a name, Ryu, this one goes fine. If I type in Ryu here and move on, it's still not fine, so I'll need to write something else. So Ryu at whatever.com. Now it's fine, okay? Your message, la la la, now it's fine. So this is the kind of thing we can do with the classes that AngularJS provides us with on forms and we can provide feedback to users to say whether a field is valid or not valid. Okay, so in the next lesson, we're gonna take this one step further and we're gonna look at some of the objects uh, that Angular provides us with to provide even more feedback and more functionality on these forms. So until then, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to share, subscribe and like guys and I'll see you in the very next one.